So I've already given a little bit of my answer here, so let me just mention a few points. One thing is, uh, I think a, a crucial point, people say, oh man, the, the government would have so many advantages, a neighboring state would have so many advantages, the free society wouldn't. They could engage in a, a draft, and you know, they could conscript a lot of people so they could throw a lot more manpower at us. They, uh, they can tax their own people and raise a lot more revenue than the insurance companies could do in the, in the private Analog, you know, the, the, the next door society that, that's relying on purely voluntary means. And so, even though it's not fair, it's undeniable that yet yeah, that neighboring state, if it wanted to, could just steamroll over us because they could just throw so many more resources at us. So, there's a couple things. One is, other things equal, the anarchist society that's a free society of the kind we're envisioning is going to be phenomenally wealthy. So, even if it's true that they can only devote 1% of their output to military defense, whereas the neighboring state devotes 50% of their output to defense, even on its own terms. It doesn't follow, therefore, that the defender is going, to be, is going to be at a loss because they're going to be so much richer. The other thing is governments notoriously don't spend their military funds wisely. So it's the amount that like the Pentagon spends to get fighter aircraft, I don't think a truly anarchist society that is buying... Uh, planes to defend itself, military jets to defend itself, is going to spend the same amount just because they're going to be more careful with their money. So the, the point is the Pentagon overspends because it's a corrupt process where they're basically funneling, shoveling money to their buddies, and then they know when they leave the Pentagon they're going to get nice plush uh, consulting contracts and things like that. So it's a big game as a way for them to take taxpayer money without literally just pocketing it when they're in office or when they're you know in the military. So you have that issue, too, that don't be afraid of these big numbers, that it's, um, it's not apples to apples. The other thing, and that's what the, the point of having a porcupine here, is that right now you think, oh, man, look at how much the U.S. government spends on its military, but the U.S. government is trying to run the world. Right? They need to have aircraft carriers to be able to project force. You know, that's what the History Channel always talks about, the U.S. military's ability to project force. And it's, you know, yeah, project that force. Um, so the, the point is that the, the anarchists said wouldn't need to do that. They would just have to make it really inconvenient for someone to invade them. Right? They don't need to be able to project force around the globe. They don't need to be able to bomb and take out some, some city 10,000 miles away. They don't have to have the ability. They just have to, so they don't need to have long-range bombers. They don't, need to have things, they don't need to have submarines that can go around the world and can stay out at sea for six months at a time before you know going to port and re- getting more food and all that kind of stuff. They just need to have submarines that can go out a little bit and try to shoot the, the enemy submarines that are trying to infiltrate their waters or that can lay mines or whatever. Right. So my point is that they could, for a lot less money, they could repel a military that on paper was a lot more expensive and, and do a good job of it. All right, so why don't I stop there? And-